Hi, my name is Dan Salofra. I'm the senior pastor at Crosswalk Church in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'd like to welcome you to our message for today. At Crosswalk, it's our vision that all people may come to know and strive to live and share the love of Jesus. And as we look at this, the message we're in today, our message series is What's Your Why? Dressed for Success. We're going to see that connection between what it is uh, that we know about the love of Jesus and how that affects our lives and how we strive to live and share it. And so as we get started today, I have a question for you and that is, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? When you look in the mirror, do you like what you see? And when I think of that, I, I think of sometimes a, a little comic that I saw where it showed men when they look in the mirror and it showed a guy who was flexing and, and trying to look his best as he, he looked in the mirror and kind of what he saw in the mirror versus how he looked. And then it was the woman who was looking in the mirror and what she saw, she didn't like it. It was, looked much worse in her eyes than she, she was. And so getting this clear view of ourselves is a very important part of what we're talking about because when we think of this message series, what's your why, being fulfilled and, and having a sense of, I'll say, liking what you see when you look in the mirror. And I'm not talking about physically when I say that, but when you think about yourself as a person, as a human being, as a, a spouse or a parent or, or a person, that you are, are comfortable with who you are. And we're going to see exactly how God gives us that and how we will find that type of fulfillment living out the purposes of God. We start today, we're in Colossians chapter 3 for, for all of our readings, but in Colossians 3, this is how it starts. He writes, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ, hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And I, I like this picture that, that it's saying you need to set your sights not on earthly things, but on heavenly things. And, and when we understand that life, there's so much of life that is temporary that we need to think about the eternal, that we need to focus on eternal things. And just using that as a filter to get started is something that can be very, very, uh, very helpful to you. I think of Jesus who said, don't stir up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but rather store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it's the very nature of earthly things that they don't last. And even when you think about that in, in looking in a mirror, if I consider looking at in a mirror now at 55 years old versus when I was 14 years old, that, that you can see there's changes in that mirror, that, that things uh, maybe not for the better. And at the same time, it, it, it's saying, no, Dan, you need to focus on those things that are eternal. And even as I, I go through, through life, like right now, um, at our site in Levine, we're not in the auditorium, but we're in the cafeteria for a period of time because of renovations in the auditorium. But it's temporary. And because it's temporary, we're, we're making the, the best with what we have. And even the auditorium, we can say, is temporary as we think about our Imagine Building program. And because those things are temporary, that we don't focus on them, that, that we're able to live with them and, and tolerate them. But when we think about eternal things, I, I want you to do that. When you think about the things that are important to you and the things that are matter, simply asking the question, is this a short-term thing of this world or is this 
an eternal thing. And in our lesson, what we're going to see is how the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the church at Colossae, the Colossians, to see how he guided them to thinking about those things that truly lasted and truly mattered. He goes on to say, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Put to death things that don't last. Put to death things that are in that column of not lasting. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Do not lie to each other, he goes on to say, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. And what we're going to see in this this section is he, he gives us a little bit of an illustration on how we can look at ourselves in the mirror and begin to see ourselves as God does and he uses the illustration of clothing. And I, I think of that a lot lately with a daughter who's getting married. There's been a lot of dresses that have been tried on and looked at in the mirror in our home lately. And as they go to do that, though, the first thing that you need to do before you put that dress on or you need to get dressed is you need to take something off. And again, this is maybe a, a guy thing as I think about getting changed and the things that you you need to take off that I I think I have a bad habit of sometimes when I come home and I take the clothes off that I'm wearing, I just kind of leave it around the bedroom. And it might be uh, on a, a chair or it might be hanging on something or whatever it is. And the question usually that my wife has is, is this clean or is it dirty? And usually what I do is I go and I do the smell test or even more importantly, she does the smell test and and you find out very quickly what is dirty or if you put it on and someone looks at you or you look in the mirror, you can say, this is dirty. This has a spot on it. This is something that you don't want to wear. And in this section, what we are being told is that conduct, the way that we act is like dirty clothes, that that we need to understand the things that by virtue of being of this world and things that don't last, they also are what make us dirty. Um, You can even call it sinful is what the Bible calls it. And and so it's this idea of the sexual immorality, the impurity, lust. Uh, Again, it talks about your old self uh, and, and having those things being taken away. And so that's the first part of this is the way that you take off your old clothes, the way that you take off the the conduct that, that makes you ugly, because that's what it is. Sin is what makes you ugly. These things that, that when you look in the mirror and you do not like what you see because it's that sinful behavior, it's what God doesn't like when he sees us, that we take it off. And we do that when we confess our sin. And I think that part of it I really don't want you to miss is that there are things, old clothes that I need to take off that I'm really fond of. And, and, and the shirt that I just like to wear, and I think it looks great, but everyone else thinks it looks horrible. And the first part of confessing your sin is there are sins that you commit that a part of you likes that a part of you doesn't want to part with it. And so the first part of confessing a sin and a behavior is to say, this is wrong. And specifically here when it talks about the the sexual desires, the sexual urges, that to say, fine, that, that might be the way that I feel in that moment, that it's very intense. But to be able to take a step back and say, this is wrong. This is not something I want to be part in. This is not lasting. This is something that that when I look in the mirror after I do it, I can't stand looking at myself because of what I've done. So it's confessing, it's saying, Lord, this is wrong. Please take this away and, and wash me for Jesus' sake. That is confession of sin and it's how we take off. First of all, before we even get dressed, take off what needs to be taken off. 
He goes on, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And this picture of, of clothing yourself. And when you think of this, maybe get in your mind of people who put on specific clothes. So this could be someone who's in the military. That when they wear the clothes that they have, that you can tell that that person's a Marine. That person is in whatever specific uh, uh, branch of the military. Other people, when you, you look at them, it might be that they're going out. That, that all of us, to an extent by what we wear are making a bit of a statement. And what he's saying is that by how we act, we are making a statement not only about ourselves, but about God. And, and what is the statement we make with kindness and compassion, humility, gentleness, and patience? We're making the statement that we are loved and we want to show that love towards others. Uh, just this past week, someone shared with me a story of the, they went through a drive through and the people in front of them paid for their bill. And, it, it, and so what they did is when they, they pulled up, they wanted to pay it forward. So they said, hey, what, what did the people behind us uh, order? We'll, we'll pay for them. And the reality of it is, is that's probably something they wouldn't have done if the person in front of them had not done it to them. And what we have with Jesus is he has paid it forward to us. That when we look at this, Jesus is asking you to clothe yourself the same way he clothed himself towards you, showing you kindness and compassion, humility, gentleness, patience, going to the cross for us, taking our sins away. And as if that weren't enough, continuing to show us kindness and, and goodness in our lives. And so this is what happens is, is God bought these clothes for us. And now we have this opportunity to put them on. And I hope you think of that. We're, we're recording this as, the, as school starts. And, and I don't know if your family's like mine was, but we'd always get the new outfits about the start of school. And, and mom and dad would get them and, and they would be there. It's like, just put them on. And sometimes the kids would be like, I don't want to. I want to wear what I want to. And, and for us as Christians to, to look at these, these things of compassion, kindness, humility, See it in Jesus and what he's done for you. And now the way that we begin to look at ourselves differently as we become more Christ-like in showing these to others. He goes on in verse 13. It's, it's the same concept as he's talking about clothing yourself. He says, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What, what a very nice, simple uh, thing to do. Forgive, just like God forgave you. So when you think of all those dirty clothes you took off, all those things which God has forgiven, do that same thing with others. And for me, one of the things that's helpful, this is a life hack for you that, that has helped me tremendously. And so I would encourage you to remember this, is that th there's an expression that, that's this, never let anyone else's sin bother you more than your own. That, that has been so helpful to me because in, in many situations, I look at what someone else has done and it seems worse. And what they've done, they deserve this and that. And it's like, no, Dan, stop it. In, in my life and in my ministry, who knows more than I do about God's word and God's plan for me? And, and so the times when, when I fail, that I fall, the sins I need to confess, the dirty clothes I need to take off after every day, that, that when I look at that and remember that God has washed it and made it clean and forgiven me, that is now giving me the, the strength to show that same love and forgiveness in my life. The next verse, again, when, when it, it just fills out the picture and says, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. 
And I love that. Love is always the perfect accessory. It, it brings it all together. If you have that outfit you like, ladies, and it's that handbag that goes with anything, it's the, that, that it just makes it pop. That's what Christ's love is in our lives. As we, we look at a, in the mirror what pops out that we want to see in ourselves, it's the love of Christ. Finally, he writes, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I love this. There's two places, catch this, where he says, let it happen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Then number two, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And in these, these words, what he's saying is that Jesus needs to be the center of your life. And I think that's the issue is when we look in a mirror and we don't like what we see, I think we're seeing ourselves clearly because we're seeing ourselves with, with all the blemishes, with all the wrinkles, with all the, the, the parts about ourselves we don't even like, that, that as we see it, in many ways, the mirror just points it back at us. But with Jesus as the center, now when we look in the mirror, we see what he sees, that, that he sees us as his dearly loved child bought with his blood, and that we begin to see ourselves being like him. Just a quick final little story. I, a friend of mine told, told the story, and I've told it before too, of he went to a place where they were refining silver. And uh, he thought it'd be cool because it talks about it in the Bible, refining things. And he said it, it, it was boring because they would heat it, then they would pound it, then they would cool it. Then they would heat it, then they would pound it, then they would cool it, then they would heat it, then they would pound it, then they would cool it. And finally, he was getting bored and he, he wanted to leave. And he said, when, when, am I, when am I going to be done? And the answer from the silversmith was, you're done when... I can see myself in it. And when you think about that in your life, of all the things that we go through, and when you think about what you want to see when you look in a mirror, when will God be done with you? When he can see himself in you. And when will you be happy with what you see? What will bring you fulfillment and contentment? When more and more you can see Christ inside of you. When, when you see what he sees, someone whose sins have been forgiven, someone who is dearly loved, and someone who is given the opportunity and takes advantage of those opportunities to live for him in their lives by showing kindness and humility and love and letting Christ rule every day. What's your why? That as you look at that, what it is that drives you, and, and I hope today as we look at this, how we've been clothed with Christ will show us how we've been truly dressed for success. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you that you have been kind and gentle and patient and forgiving to us. And Lord, let our lives now be a response to your love for us. Uh, as we look at the clothes that you have bought for us, that you've paid for on the cross, Lord, let us now live them. Uh, let us gladly put those on and just look for just one way in each day to be kind, just one way to be compassionate, to begin to look at other people differently in the same way that you look at us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.